Okay, shalom and welcome to Doc Aviv 2021 at the Cinematech around Tel Aviv and online. My name is Aran Polishuk and I'm thrilled, really, I'm really thrilled to be here with the director of Miracle Fishing, Miles Argrove. Hey there, Miles, which hi, is screening in our panorama section. Miracle Fishing is available online from July 1st to 10th and in theaters July 2nd and 4th and 7th. And now, in Hebrew, Shalom v'bruchim avayim l'dok aviv 2021 ב-Cinematek ברחבי תל אביב וב-Online אני ארן פולישוק ואני מתרגש מאוד להיות כאן עם הבימאי של לדוג ניסים, מיילס ארגרוב. מיילס, אני רק אמרתי את כל זה אינטרו בהיברו. שלום. כאן במסגרת פנורמה, לדוג ניסים זה מין אונליין מהראשון ועד העשירי ביולי ובאולמות הסינמטק בשני, ברביעי והשביעי ביולי. Okay, wow, Miles, really, uh, Miles, I'm very, very excited to see you today. I, I just finished to watch the film 30 minutes ago, so it's all very fresh and, you know, I'm like, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the people that are, that watched, uh, that are now watching this webinar watch the film. If not, if anyone here did not watch the film, stop here, we're going to talk about it and just come watch the film and come straight later to see this Q&A with Miles Arbor. This is like basically, this is like basically a film. This is, a, how can I say, I find it when we're talking, we are going to talk about the film, but this is a love song for both of your parents, for your mother and your father. Uh, Absolutely. So yeah, and it was always meant, they were, they were supposed to see the film, the finished product, but it, uh, they pass a lot sooner than I thought, and then the film took a lot longer than I thought, so. I'm sure you answered that question um, many, many times, but, and I can understand and I can think, but I wanna hear from you. It took 25 years to finish this film, but let's be honest, when you, when you were shooting this, it's not, you, you were very, very young. I can, I can imagine that your life now are not the same as it been 25 years ago. When was, this, when was the, the point that you knew that you were gonna make this film after all this hours of hundreds of hours of documentation? Well, um, you know, yes, it started off as, as really a suggestion for my mom, for me, to, because we had so much time on our hands during the kidnapping, uh, as a way to just sort of uh, have something to show, home video to show my dad, you know, we were very hopeful that he would return. And so, you know, there were all these remarkable things that were going on. And so she encouraged me to start, start just documenting a little bit. And um, over the months, it, it turned into like from a side project into sort of my, my purpose was to just to document everything. I think it was a form of escapism as well, but certainly I didn't start, you know, I didn't even know that filmmaking was an option for me as a career at that point, uh, to tell you the truth. So I, I never had that mindset that I was going to be a filmmaker or make a documentary, but I think it's, it's in the midst of that 11 month period of documenting my father's kidnapping that, that, the idea was was planted because uh, there's in in the end at the end there's a scene in the kitchen with my father and, and I'm actually saying I made a documentary so I I had clearly you know I knew that what I had was remarkable and that that it I wanted to do something with it one day uh, at the time I was like oh it'll take me a few years I'll 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 go through college and get the experience I need. Uh, so I, I expected it to be in the early 2000s before it was, you know, by the time I had it ready. Um, and clearly it was just a really naive idea. I, I, first of all, had so much life to live and figure out and learn how to edit. And, 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 and then, you know, I tried to do it on my own and uh, it, it, it became clear that, that I needed financing in order to do it. And everybody was interested, or a lot of people, I should say, were interested, but but nobody wanted me to be the director of the thing. If somebody wanted to take it over and, and give me some meaningful input. Um, and so, you know, I, and, and, and other people proposed recreations and things like that that just didn't sit well with me. I, I knew what I had was pure and real. And I, I just wanted to, 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 to tell it the, like, as if you were a member of our family sitting with us, you know, experiencing this, not knowing what the outcome is going to be. And that was, that was what I, I wanted and that's what I stuck to and that's why it took so long. And, and of course, I got really close near the end of the 2000s, uh, 
but the economy, I'd lost some, like the only deal that I could get. And, and very shortly afterwards, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. When, once that happened, I put the footage away. I thought I was really close, but at that point, put it away. She passed away, my dad soon afterwards. And I literally just let it sit for, for eight, eight years and got the experience I needed working on other people's films. And, uh, and finally, you know, in about 2016, 2017, I, I, I just, I knew I wasn't getting any younger. I could see the 25th anniversary approaching. I just needed, I needed to get it done. So I just completely, I sat right here in this spot and just worked away. Well, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for the, for those words. You know, I just, I just, I've just noticed that the film is going to be screened here in, in Tel Aviv in July 4th, you know, and although I don't, I, I do think there is a lot of heroism in this film without a doubt, but it's not a patriotic heroism. It's a really a triumph of the wing of really simple, like really down to earth people internationally. You know, you can see the side that you all collected um, around yourself. You know, at the end of the film, I was like really touched when your mother said that, you know, it was, we were happy, but we were sad that the group you know, you were all together there today. You know what? We were like, we we're all watching together to watch an episode of Game of Thrones. And you were like watching them. You were like sitting them all together for them. You know, you had a mission to release your father. Tell us about the separation of the end. The, the separation? T tell us about the end. You know, like what happened the day after, the day after your father. I I'm talking about the dynamic of the group that was like there. Uh, oh, combined. when we all... When we all... Yeah, I mean, it, that, that's, I definitely wanted to, to feature that. It was such a complex emotion. You would think that it would just be complete sheer joy. And it was. Uh, I mean, we had, we had accomplished our mission. But, but, you know, there was a lot of love that had sort of formed between this group uh, that sort of came together for this one reason. And once my dad was released... Uh, none of us had been thinking about that future, our future as a group. And it was clear that that was it. Like we were going to pack up and we were going to, we were going to leave. And so there was this great deal of sadness uh, that was sort of mixed. It was a really complex thing. And I, I, I worried about putting it in the film for out of fear that people would misunderstand it, but I, I just wanted it to be true in, you know, as real, like just how we felt. And, and that was the, the God's honest truth. And um, you know, we, within a few days, we're out of the country, uh, pretty much. It was a really sad uh, goodbye. But even six months later at Christmas, the, the Griners, the German family that were our neighbors, uh, they even came to the States for Christmas to spend it with us. There was this real need for us to still be together. And over the years, uh, you know, our families kept in touch. I'm, I'm, I'm in constant communication with them. They're, they're like, all those people are, are like a second family uh, to me. You know, the, we, we, we definitely share a special, special bond. Did you ever came back? Did you ever went back to Colombia? Well, I did in uh, 2005, which was 10 years after the kidnapping. I went and shot interviews down there uh, with Robert and with uh, the FBI negotiator, Oscar, as well as some other people, uh, people and got some B-roll and things like that. Um, that material ended up in the film just as voiceover, it, it just not, not the talking heads uh, aspect. That's Originally, the documentary was going to show like a typical documentary, but uh, it was really my producer encouraged me when he came on board to just keep, put, just cover it up with, with this original footage. I never knew I could do it, but I, I uh, was so pleased with that because I feel like it really helps it become a more immersive film. Um, but that's not the question you asked, sorry. Max, one sec, okay, just one sec. Sorry, there was some noise. 
Okay, so, you know, I want to talk about, you know, every time there is like a personal documentary, there is this debate to talk about the filmmaking or to talk about the personal story. Obviously, here it, it, it goes, it goes, um, it goes together. You know, you have to talk about the, the story. I want to hear about the story, but I do see, I do, we do see the film. We understand the story. I'm, I am curious about the way of taking a camera. I do want to get inside a little bit to pick to pick your head about, you know, to take this way of mechanism of therapy for all of you, you know, you feel like in one point, like, wow, they're like really ready for shooting, you know, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure they were not, you know, like, okay, Miles is going to have the camera and now we're going to talk with the, uh, with the gorilla people, but you feel like they're, were, were aware. So it's not a criticism, but I would love to hear you. And I'm sure you've been asked that many, many times to go back 25 years ago, you know, like you're sitting in the salon, everyone are coming and you're taking the camera well, in, in that point, like, who are you exactly? Although you're very young, but can you, re can you remember who were you at that point, the director, the photographer, the son, or all of the above? Well, I mean, I was just a, you know, a, a, a struggling college student just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, you know, when this all happened. And, uh, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, it was suggested by my mom as just kind of a home video uh, project. And I think the thing about it is, is, well, I mean, it was my dad. So I wasn't just sort of this, you know, stranger coming into the circle. But also, I started off very slowly. I started off just filming a little bit here, a little bit there. And we all knew each other so well that, um, you know, by the time you know, I think everybody just got kind of used to it a little bit here and there. And then as, as things got deeper and more intense, uh, you know, I, by, by that point, people just, I mean, I was just the kidnapped victim's son just there with a video camera. I, I will say that the um, professional advisors that we hired, um, I think I started filming at a point I, I, where they, they weren't there like during a break, anyway, it's a long story, but uh, they, I don't think they were very pleased to say, you know, because I was basically kind of documenting this whole secretive world of theirs as well. Um, but, uh, you know, this was something that we were having to do as a family at our own expense. Uh, they didn't really have too much of a, of, of, a, of a say in it. And then, you know, at the time, I mean, I, they did, they, they weren't gonna really confront me with it and they got used to it as well. I mean, it just, I, they were weary at first, but they got used to it. I was just there every day, just, but, but interacting, I, I, you know, so I was just one of, one of everybody, you know, I, I don't know. It, it just, I've never had that sort of comfort level in anything, you know, that I've even done since, even as a professional shooting something professionally. Um, but I guess it's, it's simply because we spent so much time to, together, you know, I, we were all living together practically. Yeah, yeah, and you and you, thank you, thank you. First of all, Miles, and you and you can really feel that in the film. I can even say, you know, there is like, um, and that's what makes this film so real. And you make you feel like so connected to the family because you know there was like times where you, you were like, okay, we're sitting here forever. We can we can laugh about it. We're not just gonna sit and cry. You're like it became it became your mission. And then when it became a way of life, the other the other life can get in, which is to cook, to play, to get full, to get, you know, to get uh, funny. There is there is humor in the film, there is humor. And I'm happy, I think many people are gonna be very connected to the film that you didn't try to make like a tragedy out of it. You just put the, your life in front of the camera. Well, I'm glad that that resonated with you because the humor was so important. It was so important to us as a group just to be able to maintain our sanity. And I, you know, there was just no way I, I could edit it out. Um, and so I wanted the film to have that element as well. Um, you know, there's, it's with everything, life is complex. It's not just black and white. There's just so much, uh, you know, complex emotion, you know, with everything. And that's what I, you know, I, I just, when I think about uh, kidnapped thrillers and things like that, that I've watched, there's always this the suspense part, but, you know, there's not the mundane. And, uh, you know, and I felt like the simple things like eating dinners and the things that we did to cope, they really needed to feature in the film uh, because, I, I mean, I guess that was sort of the whole point. And that's why I feel like even though, you know, Kid Columbia is no longer the kidnapping capital of the world, 
um, I feel like the story still has real relevance because it's just about maybe how people can come together to, you know, to overcome whatever obstacle it may be. It doesn't have to be a kidnapping. I think there's a lesson to be learned in, in just reaching out to those that are close to you, forming strong bonds with them, and uh, just trying to do the little things to make life seem worth living, listening to music putting on candles, having a nice dinner. It just, it just made us feel human at the end of the day. And we needed it. There was just so much time. It was pretty miserable. Wow. Thank you. You know, I have a question. I just thought about it. Maybe it was in the film and maybe I missed it, but your brother, Giddy, it, he changed his name. Like, right, he, he changed his name. It's, uh, you know, I told the story I'm telling myself that he said, if my father will come back, I will change my name, something like that. I'm curious. Are, am I allowed to ask why he changed his name and why to oh, Giddy? Of course you can, but I, 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 it's actually as simple as my dad was Tom and he, my, or Thomas, and my brother was Thomas. So my dad was called Tom and my brother, they called him Tom G because his middle name was Getty. And it, you know, about maybe a year before he had gone off to university for the first time. And it was then that he, when he was starting his new life in university that he decided to go, he didn't want to be Tom G. So he, he, uh, he, he started calling himself Getty. And, and it was, I, and to this, I call him Getty now, but certainly during that time, it was a real sort of, uh, you know, half and half, it, you know, I, I grown up calling him Tom G. So it was, it was just a, you know, an interesting transitional period for him, but it had nothing to do with the kidnapping. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I started, you know, like I, I saw the film and I said, like, I'm, you know, I'm comparing to obviously to narrative American film. They said, wow, the only film I can think about is like Ransom with Mel Gibson. You know, I felt like this is, it, it felt like so intense, you know, the fact that someone came and kidnapped, you know, they kidnapped this, uh, Mel Gibson's son, they kidnapped your father. Now I'm jumping, you know, I, I, I just want to know very, very quickly about what you're doing today. And you see after it, it, Columbia wasn't the, the it, it was very adventurous life for you, obviously, but since then you were following your father. I see like you're, you were in Sierra Leone, you were like traveling, can you please tell us did, did the life over there like made you to be very adventurous with your career? Well, I mean, just having grown up overseas, it was, it was the, I mean, I was a third generation expatriate. My grandfather um, on my mom's side and my mom grew up overseas. So that was in my blood, I felt. And I've, I, I thought for sure that I would continue with that life. Uh, you know, uh, definitely when the kidnapping happened, it made me sort of reassess a little bit in terms of, um, trying to be more careful i say that but i i have since taken on jobs in 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 fairly dangerous places at times uh i've tried to deal with those as cautiously as possible um honestly if if, if i could have taken you know raised my family overseas as i was raised i would do it in a heartbeat if there was a job opportunity in vietnam i'd move my family tomorrow but the the the, the fact is that you know uh trying to make a living in the film industry as a freelancer, uh, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a better environment for that where I can actually make a, a career out of that. And so that's, that was sort of my reality. And how I um, sort of over, like dealt with that was by doing one of the great things about working in the documentary world is that you, you take on so many different subjects. And I was very fortunate to, to hook up with filmmakers that were do, doing stories in Sierra Leone after the war and um, and, and also in uh, Eastern Congo in more recent years, which is, you know, heavily, uh, confl a heavily cl conflicted area. Uh, that would be mo my mo most trying, challenging job that I've, I've, I've done, I would have to say. Um, you know, I definitely was still, it's in my blood no matter what, but I, I uh, and I, when I did take the Congo work, I, my father wasn't alive um, anymore. And I, I really wished he, I mean, for obvious reasons that he had been, but, but I think he, as concerned as he would have been for me, he would have also been very proud, you know, that, that, that I was w willing to try and do that kind of work. We'll have, we'll have many more questions, but I know we need to wrap up soon. So I'm, I'm just going to jump and, uh, and please let me know if, if, if you're up to tell or were like stuff in the film that you wanted to put, you know, and maybe someone or you were thought like, okay, maybe your brother or the family or whoever said like, Miles, maybe better not to put this on in the film. 
Well, you know, I had to be very careful. And to this day, I, I don't, you know, where, where we got money together from and, and, and that kind of thing. That was always going to be a sensitive uh, subject. You know, also, I mean, my father's company sort of left us in this position where we had to do things on our own. I, I could have made it a lot more of an expose on all of that kind of stuff and been with a lot of anger. I, I just decided that what I really wanted to focus on was, was what was, those were things beyond our control. And, and I just wanted to focus on the things we could control. And so once the, the gorillas came to us with a means to get my dad out, meaning, you know, radio frequencies and a way for us to pay a ransom, uh, that was, that was what we chose to do. And that's, that's what I wanted the film uh, to focus on. Um, you know, honestly, it, this goes to the question about why it took 25 years. I got pretty much everything I wanted out of that documentary. I mean, I was, I, I yes, yeah, sure. There was, mo there were moments I'm, I would have loved to have been filming there, uh, you know, during the kidnapping that couldn't be in the film because they just weren't on camera. Uh, you know, there's regrets like that, but I got to make the story that I wanted to make uh, and pretty much of the material that I had, I, I got everything in there. Maybe there were some little small things here and there because they took your son a little tangent or uh, in the interest of time. But I, you know, it was for the greater good of, it was for the good of the whole, you know, the film. So uh, it was always easy to, to, to say goodbye to those little, little pieces. Well, but well, when, when, when we were like talking with partners for financing and things like that, when, when people would suggest that maybe we wanted to cut out, say the scene of my mom dancing to Benny Goodman on the day we're about to pay the ransom, it, it became clear to me that they weren't the right partners because they were sort of missing the point of, of, of the film. It was that kind of moment that was sort of embarrassing, certainly embarrassing for me as a still kind of on the verge of being a teenager. I was in my early twenties, but, but mentally still like, oh, you know, embarrassed about my mom my, and my parents uh, as, as we have a tendency to do when we're younger, uh, you know, it was uncomfortable to film it, but I had to put it in, into the film because it was a real insight to how she was feeling and it sort of lifted it. I, it just, yeah, so I got what I wanted. I really did and I'm very fortunate. Well, that, 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 that's beautiful to hear from a filmmaker that says that he got everything he wanted from the film. So although we need to, I'm gonna be a little bit more greedy because you know, for those, for the filmmakers and for the viewers that are very curious to know about your, your, your next films, I've just noticed, and I know you're from Dallas, by the way, the, my last business trip in February, 2020 was to Dallas. So I I, I, I love that scene. <laughs> it was the last right. business of, you know, where I traveled. So I see that you're working about a new film about Stanley Marcus. Okay, so yeah, I mean, that's been in development for a while. We're trying to, to work through all that. We're not, uh, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. I, we would very much like to get that off the, off the ground. Um, uh, yeah, no, honestly, uh, it's, I'm, it's, I have ideas for a few things here in the future and stuff, but I, it took me so long to make this film and it was such a, it was such an emotional process and it, it just took a lot out of me. And I think right now I'm, I'm just kind of doing freelance work here and there, working on other people's projects, just not, not really trying to take something on like that. I mean, it literally is, uh, has come out like, uh, it came out on Discovery a few months ago, but it's starting the rounds on like Apple TV, or where you can, sorry, where you can get it on VOD or, or, or whatever, just like this week. So I'm kind of right now at the very tail end of this, of, of this, this process. And uh, I'm gonna take the summer off and kind of figure out where, what, what, um, where to go next, what, where, what, what's gonna happen next. Well, Miles, I know the film was supposed to premiere in Tribeca. It, it, it did premiere in Tribeca 2020, but unfortunately not to the audience, to the online. So I'm very happy, you know, that even now in Dark of Even, I read that the film is going to be in many other festivals. So it's going to be on the big screen and, and the audience is going to meet the film. So it's, it, I, I feel like the, the audience of Dark of Even is really lucky to see your film, Miles. And I, I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I wish I was there with you. I haven't yet had the opportunity to sit in a theater and, and watch it with people. I did two weeks ago for Tribeca 2021, get to view it with a, with a small audience, you know, out, outdoors, and it was really nice. That was my first time to see it with anybody, which has been a really weird thing, and it's, that's a whole other story. But 
I'm very envious of those that are actually getting to sit in a theater and, and watch it. I, it's a film that that has a lot of sound and then a lot of silence. And when you're in an environment that you can kind of feel the real juxtaposition between the two, uh, I, I, I think it, you know it's more powerful to me anyway. I'm biased, but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Miles, thanks so much. I really, I wish you like a really wonderful uh, summer and, and, and even it, it should be boring and wonderful and lazy. And I wish the film all the best. It was an honor to talk with you and really thanks so much for finding time. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor for you guys uh, to have me. Um, I'm, 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 I'm grateful. And we, we will keep you posted how many, how, how the film was got re reactions I'd love, I'd love to hear about it it's it's so i've got such little information that any bit helps believe me wonderful take care thanks so much miles you too thank you so much bye bye <laughs>